there everyone, this is Kate and welcome to post number four in the Pay to Dance blogging series. So today I'm going to be delving further into the history of exotic entertainment and uh, specifically the Moulin Rouge. So the second industrial revolution saw a time of frivolity unfolding in Paris. Uh, with electricity being rolled out across the city, many cabarets uh, established themselves and um, offered a place for aristocrats and workers alike to relax and enjoy themselves. Uh, these, ven these venues generally settled in Montmartre uh, at the centre of Parisian nightlife. Um, Joseph Ollo and Charles Zidler chose the name Moulin Rouge, uh, which meant Red Mill, uh, for their new theatre. They also gave the nickname the Premier Palais de Femme, <laughs> uh, meaning the first palace of women. Uh, the two founders claimed that the Moulin Rouge would soon become a temple of music and dance. Uh, the Moulin Rouge featured circus acts, theatre and musical performances with attractive da dancing girls and tableau vivants. Uh, tableau vivants, meaning uh, living picture were a group of stage models thoughtfully posed and theatrically lit. Uh, throughout the duration of the display, the models did not move or speak uh, and their presence on stage was intended to imitate art uh, and paintings. Uh, the Moulin Rouge quickly gained a reputation for being a place where men could view young Parisian girls uh, with unique and amazing dancing skills, uh, most notably the famous Can Can. Uh, a French term meaning tittle-tattle or scandal, the can-can dance became an opportunity to undermine Victorian era, era morality and was part of a growing movement for change. Uh, so Paris oozes sex, glamour, indulgence and hed hed hedonism <laughs> uh, and to this day the area of B Pigalle continues to uphold the city's raunchy reputation. Uh, once a bohemian neighbourhood of painter studios and literary cafes, today Bical, Pica, Pigalle <laughs> plays host to many sex shops, theatres and adult shows, especially in Place Pigalle uh, and the main boulevards. Adult stores uh, pr proudly flaunt their wares in large shop windows. I've been to this area of, of Paris as well and it's profoundly different to um, to the sites that you would see definitely back here in Australia where um, where adults shops are you know completely there's there's no windows it's all very secret the doors are all you know blocked out you cannot see inside whereas um, in this area of Paris you you walk past and these adult shops are just like any other clothing shop any other store that you would pass in the street um, you can see right inside you can see everything that's inside all the lingerie or everything <laughs> and there's even at, at the door of the gentlemen's clubs in you know broad daylight right in the middle of the day the dancers are standing on the door in their lingerie and um, beckoning in their customers so it's a very 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 different atmosphere um, so that's what Pigalle is is still like um, and yeah so the Moulin Rouge does continue to run a nightly show for adult audiences uh, featuring more than a hundred performers and extravagant costumes laden with feathers rhinestones and sequences so it is still uh, a very prominent element of um, the Parisian experience um, so I hope that you've enjoyed um, my little blog post today. Sorry for stumbling a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at reading um, on video. Um, but I hope that you've um, been educated a little bit on um, exotic entertainment in Paris and the Moulin Rouge. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the Windmill Theatre, uh, which is in London and continues to operate in London. Uh, so I hope that you will join me then. And I will see you in the next video.